Today is July 4th. Happy birthday, America. God bless America and all of the wonderful people that make it up. June 30th, I posted a blog about cancel culture, also called counterculture. I have a friend who received his doctorate degree in clinical psychology from the University of Houston in 1972 and has been in private practice for 40 years before retiring. I want to share his comments with you. I know they resonated with me, and I think they will with you. And he is so well-spoken, more than I could ever do, I felt it important to share with you. Ah, a poet, always a lyricist. <laughs> Here it goes. Quote, I just finished hearing your blog on cancel culture that you did yesterday. It was right on and very well done, as all have been. Once again, I can't help saying it. The bottom line is that, in my opinion, the vast majority of the political counterculture movement, believers and actions are perfect examples of decayed and despicable character development, with underlying value reflective of their own self-serving narcissism and false sense of victimization. It is so much easier to blame others than doing the right thing themselves. The combination of deep character flaws, coupled with a political system that feeds upon power, control, and systemic lies, is a very dangerous system that could readily lead to what we are currently experiencing, that of culture of hate where collective goodness becomes evil and personal responsibility relative to living a happy, loving, fulfilling life becomes less and less likely, leads to anarchy and cultural destruction, after which power mongers take over and control others, promising them security and goodness for all. This, of course, leads to a socialist, communist, government that focus on power and control at the expense of tradition, family, religion, and personal freedoms. In my opinion, once again, the only remedy is fighting to maintain a free and responsible society that produces human beings who accept personal accountability, responsibility, and holding values of love of oneself and others, truth ambition, and the very sacredness of life itself, among many other values reflective of the collective good for all. The only way this can ever be accomplished is by individuals, including the political elite and parents raising generations whose values favor human life and collective goodness. I believe there are still many more people in America that believe this than those who don't. But it will take tremendous strength, courage, and possibly even physical assault to protect and maintain the America I once knew. That was the beacon of freedom and promise for the entire world. Only time and the hopeful return of sanity and civility and the political leadership will tell the tale for us, our children, our grandchildren, and generations beyond. If we lose it now, it will be ever more difficult to get back, if at all. In this regard, Margaret, I, for one, thank you very much for your effort in trying to save our culture and as serving as a fine and proud example for others to emulate. Personally, I try to talk with young people, whatever I can, but it is very difficult due to the extremely strong social media platform influences and our generally decaying educational system influences, from elementary school to university levels, on our youth, many of whom in higher education are voting age. On an even more personal note, I often am in conflict with the question of wanting to live the rest of my life seeking personal joy with my family and friends, rather than focusing upon too much of trying to change things that are so stressful and in some ways so anti-life, at least as I define that for myself. That conflict within me has existed much of my life, but as time marches on, 
the choices I make relative to that conflict become more and more important and at times excruciatingly difficult to deal with. Well, I think our doctor friend said what we're all thinking. I certainly can't say it better. I don't have his eloquence, and I needed to share with you from his vantage point a very, very intelligent man with a heart, and I hope you can enjoy and listen to what he has to say.